Mike St. George here with Endurly, athlete and doctor of physical therapy. So I've been working a lot with sports medicine, sports performance, been doing this for over 10 years and I wanna to come to you to talk about how to use a massage gun. So massage guns have been the latest craze for the past couple of years. There is more research coming out to show that the vibration, the percussion helps for recovery because what it does is it helps to stimulate the tissue by bringing blood flow and circulation and relaxation to the area. So that stimulation of the vibration and percussion sends a message to the brain to relax the area. So this can be done after a hard workout, tense positions, or long sustained efforts. So understanding how to use it is important because if the tissue is really tender and sensitive and you're too aggressive, you could cause some more damage. So we're gonna go through a series of videos to show how to use it properly, safely, and effectively so you can have a good recovery effort afterwards all of your hard workouts. We're gonna talk about the different settings that these massage guns have. So basically most of them have a button on the bottom that you push for on, and then there's a button on the back that'll change the intensity. The difference between the settings is how intense and how frequent the percussions are. So a setting one on this is kind of a low amount. So it's kind of frequent, but the pressure is about that. It's not that hard. So it's kind of going at a low pace. Middle is a little bit faster, moderate pressure. And then level three is faster, so more frequently. So it's getting more vibrations, more percussions per second. We're gonna talk about the proper pressure application with the massage gun. So let's start at level one. So lower percussion. When we go through the muscle tissue, if Haley's really sore in her quads, I don't want to take this and try to drive it right through her leg. It's not an impact driver. So really what we're going to do is just kind of let the gun do the work. So I'm kind of holding this. I can even hold it with two fingers and let the weight of the gun and the percussion do the work. My goal is to try to go right over the area that is tense, up and down. And usually we do this for about two, three minutes. It doesn't have to be a 10 hour production. Just nice and easy, just to stimulate some blood flow and relaxation to the area. If I want to go a little bit harder, same thing. Keep the same force, light application, going up and down in the area that's affected. We're going to talk about the different attachment pieces. So most of these massage guns come with multiple heads that go on the tip here. So the round ball is kind of a general use. You could use this pretty much all over the body. And then we have other different pieces. So we have a softer piece here that kind of has some give to it. Might want to use this on some more tender spots, such as maybe on the neck or forearm or some areas that the tissue could be a little bit more sensitive. We also have a little bit of a flat piece. You might want to use this on some areas if you want to work around the hip, just so some of the harder pieces don't hit into the head of the femur, so on your hip bone. So that will kind of get more of just a larger area with a more of a flatter percussion so we don't get into deep too deep. And then we have the bullet. This is really aggressive, so if you want to get into like a localized position. So if you're trying to get maybe like into a deep spot of the calf or maybe some spot into the forearm or just kind of like a little nook and cranny area where you just have some like localized tension, that's where this will work. But this is a real aggressive one, so I would suggest starting on maybe a low setting and working your way up. And then the other piece is a little bit more technical. It's the fork. So this one works really well too to try to get along into the calf up along the Achilles. You can use this on the forearm, even the neck along the upper traps. And all these pieces have the different contours to get to the different anatomy of the human body. So depending on where you're hurting and where you're most sore, you could use the pieces most appropriately. We're gonna talk about how long to use a massage gun for. So earlier I mentioned we do it for a couple minutes, but with the, some of the areas a little bit more tense, you could uh, extend that time out to even five minutes, but your goal is to try not to stay too long in one area. So if I have a really sore quad, I'm gonna kind of go up and along the anatomy, trying to stay away from the bony prominences. So the uh, kneecap or out on the outside, coming along, staying away from the hip bone. And you just wanna go up and down. You could go across the fibers, and doing this for about two to five minutes, and then you switch to the next leg. You could work your entire body if you really want to, but it depends on how, you know, how sore you are and how much recovery you need. But this is something that you want to add in as a recovery tool. If you have to do this after every workout, then that's probably telling you that your body's doing something a little too excessive that you always have to keep using the recovery. So these things are supposed to be used as an accessory to your workout and your training. If you're, again, if you're finding you have to use this all the time, every day, your whole body, there's probably something that has to be tweaked a little bit with your training because your body is just breaking down too much. So a couple minutes to the area, you can flush out all the areas that are sore, you know, do that after long strenuous efforts. So we're gonna show how to use the massage gun on various areas throughout the body. So 
Posterior chain tends to be an area that requires a lot of work because those are areas that we normally can't reach ourselves. So if you want to use a recovery tool to get those areas to leave the tension, here's how we would do it. So if we put it on a moderate setting, we want to get the hamstrings. We want to start just above the back of the knee. So medial hamstring kind of going up just to where it originates onto the ischial tube, so the butt bone, and then up and down all along to the outside. I would stay away from the IT band. The IT band is that connective fascia on the outside. What I would do, so come on this side to show you, is I would hit the TFL. Come onto the side there to get the TFL and also the glute muscles working from the sacrum all the way down to the femoral head because that glute muscles go in a fan-like position. So working in a flush-like position here, you could even go up and down and then working back down into the hamstring, but stay away from the IT band. Same thing going on to the calf, if I change the head attachment. And we want to get into here. So staying off the Achilles tendon, working our way up to the central spot, lateral and the medial heads of the gastroc soleus, working our way up here, just to the top, back of the knee, and then back down, staying around the Achilles. If you want to get a little deeper in there, you can turn it sideways and get to the sides and get more into the peroneal muscles and work in that way. Also can use this on the bottom of the foot, working into the plantar fascia as well as onto the heel. And then if we want to go up into the low back, so again, I'll change the head attachment, we'll use the round piece. So right here is the tailbone, so we want to stay off the bony prominences, so the PSIS of both sides, you'll feel those right along here in her paraspinals, working our way all the way up. Staying along here, stay away from the ribs, that'll be uncomfortable. So working in the thoracolumbar fascia, and then up into the paraspinals, all the way up here, and we can kind of go even into the mid-back area. There's a lot of tension up in here. Staying off of the bone, the scapula, off of the spine, and then Haley, let me have you put your arms down at your side. And then if I wanted to work up into the upper traps, up into here, stay off of the neck, that'll be uncomfortable working ways into the sides here. And you can even can work into some of the scapula muscles. So just feel for where the bone is, try to stay off of that. Working onto the soft tissue in and around there. So big key points is light pressure, applying through the anatomy of the muscle, stay away from the bony prominences. All the techniques we went through with how to use a massage gun is basically what you want to do for the recovery. So these have become more popular over the past couple years. You just want to make sure that everyone is using them properly. Again, there is research to show that the vibration and the percussion is efficient for recovery. Just again, making sure we're using them appropriately. So light pressure, you know, a couple minutes on the areas. And again, if you're using this after each and every workout, it's probably because you're building up too much tension in your body and it has to do something with your training. These should be used after some of the long efforts or if you just have a real tense day and you want to release some tension out, that's fine. But these are supposed to be an accessory to your recovery. So you add these in with other, you know, tips and tricks and nutrition, hydration, all those other things, and this could help you recover after your training. So if you have any other questions or any other things you want to look at about learning how to use massage guns, go to EnduroElite.com.